lot happening in Web3 world when it comes to gaming. Today, we're going to be breaking down a little bit of Illuvium's response to one of the most viral games out there, and that is Pal World. We'll break it down for you. Don't miss it. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back into Tech Path. All right, before we get started, I want to thank our sponsor, and that is Tangem. And this is a great self-custody wallet that you guys should go explore if you're looking at doing self-custody. In other words, getting your tokens off of exchanges, moving them to your own wallet. Your own wallet, you can do that with Tangem. One cool feature that Tangem has uh, just launched is their partnership with Changely. And Changely essentially is a great swap mechanism. They're going to be doing free swaps between February 14th through the 21st. So great uh, Valentine's Day gift for you guys. All you have to do is click that little Buy Tangem button. That will take you over to the three-card set, the two-card set. Get the three-card set. It's the best way to go. You've got backups, and it's a great value. So just check it out. Use our uh, link right there. It's going to give you guys some discounts and uh, helps the channel. All right, let's get into a few points here. I want to jump over to, of course, this post coming in from Pal World. A total number of players exceed 19 million. That's right. That wasn't a misprint. 19 million. It's been less than two weeks since it was released. Thank you, Steam. 12 million, Xbox, 7 million players. And if you think about any games out there, to have these kinds of numbers, even at 10% of this, would be an overwhelming success. So for us to see this, it showed you, and I think it showed everybody in gaming, what uh, kind of appetite uh, was out there for, for this right here. And of course, right here, Power Success, Crypto Entrepreneur's Indie Game achieves 100 million revenue within days. And this is the thing I think that people have to really kind of pay attention to right here. I want to kind of highlight this. This is the founder, Takuro Mizobi, a former employee of JP Morgan Securities, also later ventured into the crypto world and utilized this crypto fortune to essentially st establish the studio, which is Pocket Pair, uh, the indie game developer in 2015. So he's not, it's not that he's new in this sector, but it shows that this uh, gentleman has a lot of conviction for what's going to be happening around Web3, I think around Web3 gaming. Nintendo, he's with uh, Nintendo as a game developer, uh, went in and started working in uh, securities with JP Morgan. And then later in 2014, founded a virtual currency exchange, CoinCheck. This is a CoinCheck is uh, probably one of the largest ones out there in Japan. And then founded Pocket Pair in 2015. So for eight years, he's been grinding and really doing a good job with obviously building out what that is. There's CoinCheck right there. So it's a real platform. And if you look at the comparison, these are the Japanese crypto exchanges by market share and by trading volume. And you can kind of see right there, CoinCheck. So or coin check. So the point being is that this is not a chance. This is not a fluke. This was a calculated move that w took years to develop and actually worked. And that to me always signals success. And that's what kind of what we've seen. So the real question is how are some of the Web3 games going to react? So Illuvium actually came out and did a, a big announcement we're going to go to a few clips to give you guys an idea of what they're doing, because there is some similarities here between Power World and what Illuvium is trying to do. I want to jump to this uh, first clip. Listen it. Does this make you feel awful that they, they, t they just soaked up all the market and now it's all gone? What are your thoughts on Power World? No, absolutely not. Now, Power World doesn't have NFTs. Weirdly enough, it's, uh, it, it's developed by a guy who's into crypto, but... It, sa it says to me that people want to play creature capture game. Kind of like freaking me out a little bit, if I'm, if I'm being honest, is I didn't know if that was just the nostalgia that people were getting from Pokemon. Power World is that, but it has nowhere near the same psychological collect. Uh, connection to the characters as what you do in our game. You, we do, our game doesn't have that connection either. But the thing that's missing from Power World is the uh, the lore elements, the story elements, the, the bios of these yeah. creatures. One of these happens every year and I'm so happy for them. But my money is on, that's a three minute, three month flash in the pan game that has a minor player base from there on out. All right, well, we'll see if uh, if Power World does and is a flash in the pan or if they've maybe unlocked the creature code, so to speak, around uh, the future of what might be Web3 Gaming. Here's a little bit of an early access roadmap. A couple of key features that are planned is PvP, uh, in-game content for raid bosses, and then uh, Pal Arena, which is um, 
PVP for, for the PALs themselves. And I think this has been um, an interesting comparison because a lot of people have referenced that this looks and feels a lot like Illumina. It should have been what Illumina was doing all along. And I think this is going to be one of those that we will know pretty quickly. Now, remember that there's been some successes like this before. So if you look at just Fortnite, I'll just kind of go from here on their wiki. But if you look at how they were and how they got started, I should say, what they did was they started to develop these relationships with content creators. And I think that's probably going to be the case with Pal World. Now, remember, though, the difference is, is obviously their partnership now with, with Xbox. I'll show you that in a second. But with that being the case, and now, you know, if you look back at Fortnite, what, what was next for them? Then they went into Marvel. Then they went into the NFL. So you saw that all you need is a great concept, great gameplay, and then, of course, great design and great execution. And they were able to do that. Is Power World maybe that kind of game? We'll see if this actually showcases. And a lot of people have kind of knocked it, saying that PALs aren't really lovable. They're not connected with what's happening in culture, especially around Web3. Here's a post just showing you some examples of, you know, the people are already doing things around these. These are nice PAL cupcakes. So you can kind of see people love it. Uh, it's clear that there is a connection uh, to culture. And I think this is going to be the thing that will either make or break it going forward. I want to go to another clip because this is talking about overworld changing to PAL world. Listen in. Obviously, people have been talking about the overworld feels empty. How do we solve that? Yeah, so... It, look, it's it's absolutely no secret that we've had uh, a, a lot of feedback saying that the overworld is empty. Uh, it's just not the same when you're not seeing the alluvials. And when I saw that, it just came, I, obviously I wasn't playing it myself, but it completely changed my entire perception of the overworld. It gave me a different feeling, like it just hit differently, right? Like if you're not seeing that alluvial in the world that you live in, you just don't get that same connection. That makes sense. And you can't just walk up to it, which is like the natural experience you would expect. Just seeing them did that for me. And I was yeah. like, oh my God, what do we do? Like get these in immediately. Yeah. And being able to tr see the alluvial, then track the alluvial, then you've got to shoot it to hunt it down. So, I mean, does that sound familiar to you guys? I mean, that obviously is exactly what's happening in that game. So maybe Illuvium has learned something from the success of what's happened here and adopted. And I don't think this is a bad thing that, you know, listen, I think it's kind of flattery when you are copying other games or other developments within games. And there really isn't a matter of any great new ideas. It's basically a regeneration of how to execute on ideas. And that, of course, I think is the bigger picture here. They talk a little bit further about auto battler and what they were going to do with it. Listen in. Uh, the, the auto battler is good, but we are also playing with the idea of actually being able to capture them without the auto battler at all, right? Like that may be the final state that we go to. It's definitely never been done in any creature capture game out there. All right, so it looks like maybe Auto Battler is going to be abandoned. And if you know the Alluvium gameplay, you know, getting to the Alluvials was the problem. Or I, I won't say it as a problem, but it was, a, it was an issue. And you kind of compare Fortnite with PUBG. This is a good example. This was in 2017. And you see right there, Fortnite, of course, exploded. But remember that PUBG hung with it quite a bit there about midway through 2017. Fortnite kind of became the game. But still, remember... This is, PUBG was still the, I think the number two or number three game, even though it was just that Fortnite was just so much more successful, but you could still be super successful in that kind of that second slot. Here's an Xbox Series post right here. Microsoft now working directly with Pocket Pair to bring improvements to Power Acquisition, maybe. We, we kind of speculated on this uh, throughout the last couple of weeks. Xbox is bright, is uh, bringing engineering resources dedicated service. We talked about this, actually reported on it, I think, the other day. This is a big deal because it's rolling out the red carpet for a startup game that really isn't that big of a studio, not well known, and definitely is a first time hit. So there's something here. There's something here that we could be seeing uh, coming to us. And don't forget that Microsoft already has some connection to crypto, including the Edge wallet, which is kind of like the Brave wallet, you know, for browser wallets. So these are not potentially 
just by chance. This is all, you know, Microsoft doesn't do anything by chance. There's a very strategic process that's underway here. Further into this, Microsoft may add crypto wallet to Xbox. This was actually in the FTC uh, case that was just ruled on. And when you look at the potential of what integrating NFTs to Xbox would mean, this would essentially unhitch, I think, the gaming sector um, in its entirety. And at that point, I think you'd start to see a lot of different uh, entities really kind of go in that direction. And it's not something new either. Uh, Xbox Phil, uh, Phil Spencer, of course, sees potential for NFTs for gaming. This is something that they're already aware of. They already think there's some interesting things, you know, quote, uh, is what Spencer is saying. There is something brewing here, and I think the question is whether or not who is going to be one of these games that ends up breaking out that we see NFTs start to be integrated. And that is going to make Web3 Gaming uh, next level. All right, so I want to cut to another clip. This was five months before the release of Pal World. This is their CEO talking about Web3 elements. Listen in. Is there some economic system in Pal World? Of course. Merchants are living around various cities. So you can sell and buy things as usual. And if you want, you can sell parts that you capture to gain some profit from it. You should know that sometimes the trading of parts itself is prohibited by public zone. Please be careful not to get caught. Is there a clan system or guild or alliance system in the game? We are currently planning to provide a guild system. If the sales of Power World is very good after the release, we could support other platforms too. All right, so I think, first of all, Nintendo has got a problem right now. This is a, an issue I think that we're going to be dealing with in the sense that if this project gets legs under it to the level, and already does, could it really unseat some of the titans in gaming? And especially if we add in Web3 elements, which they were talking about, that is going to be a very critical uh, component. Now, there's been people researching out there. I'm going to show you guys a couple of research points here. This was a post not too long ago. Uh, this, of course, is Mazobi, the CEO. Uh, but they put up a COO candidate. Now, one thing that was kind of interesting was this right here. Let me zoom in on that for a little bit. Game, developed, um, game development based on blockchain. So right here is what they're looking for in terms of a CEO because they're getting ready to start gaming development on blockchain. Now, this was a while back. So are they already and have they been underway? And this was a market test out there. And now you've got Xbox and Microsoft paying attention. Interesting timing. I think not. We'll see. I think all these things happen for a reason. All right, if you guys, we're going to continue to break these things down for you, give you guys some insights to Web3 Gaming, because this is important for crypto and tokenized assets and the idea of what Web3 means, which means you own stuff in the game. That's really the difference here that makes it so unique going forward. So make sure and subscribe to the channel right now. You'll get a lot of that, along with other regular, you know, alpha that we get into on general crypto, Bitcoin, all that good stuff. If you're not in our diamond circle, get in that as well. And of course, catch me out there on X at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.